So team, keep it clean. We got a lot of exciting stuff to go over with all Baltimore Ravens. But before we get into that, we got some personal exciting news to share with y'all. Is that our daughter, she was born early Monday morning, or should I say late night, because uh, it was 1 a.m. Um, on Monday. She's already on that CPT time coming through late. But anyway, um, she is here. She is healthy. She's doing really, really good. Her mom, my wife, she's doing really, really good. Carter as a big brother. Carter, see, he reminded me of uh, Mike McDonald last year. Um, because Mike McDonald, something would be going on that might have been bothering him early on in the game, and it would be messing him up. It would be messing the Ravens up. But then what did he do? And sometimes in the second quarter, but definitely by the second half, he made adjustments. And that's exactly what Carter did because initially when he first found out that my wife was pregnant, he was nervous. He was a little scared and whatnot um, because this is something different. Carter's eight getting ready to be nine real soon, so having somebody else come through is like, whoa, hold up. That's a big static shock right there. Um, but along the way, he sort of changed his tune and he went from being nervous to being really, really excited about being a big brother. So he's been great with her, wanting to hold and stuff, just and been letting him know, like, hey, that's your little sister. So you always got to be there for her. She always going to look up to you. Uh, but he, he's really, really happy to be a big brother officially. So I appreciate all y'all uh, that have been checking on us along the way, that have been just showing support, not even just now and even over the past nine months, but really over the years, man. So I appreciate y'all a lot. Thank you for everything that you do uh, for our family. Uh, we appreciate y'all like crazy. So thank you. Now, um, something else that we appreciate is when rumors that we hear about they come to fruition, and that's exactly what's going down with the Baltimore Ravens. Before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel, uh, turn your notifications on so you do not miss not a single thing, and leave a like on the video because it helps out the channel a ton, tremendously, it really does, and I appreciate the fact that y'all have been doing that like crazy, so thank you, keep it up, please. And also share the videos with your friends, your family, just really wherever. Let everybody know about the channel so we could keep this thing growing, baby. Now. We're talking about rumors, rumors that come to fruition, especially when it's a rumor that we really, really like, that we heard about. And we're like, oh, I hope that's true, but I don't know if it is going to be or not. That's what we heard about the Ravens having alternate helmets. But today, the Baltimore Ravens officially announced that it was real. It wasn't just a rumor. It wasn't just something that was being talked about. It is real. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens said this fall, purple will rise, introducing our new alternate helmet. And they look good. They look good. Uh, I love them. Initially, when I first saw them, I liked them a lot, but I didn't love them. Um, but what made me fall in love with them was when the Baltimore Ravens, they showed a video and they showed pictures and stuff of the players with that. Not only with the new helmets on, but with the jerseys that match perfectly. Like the helmet got the, it's, it's purple and then it got the gold trim, but the jersey got the purple jersey. And it's that different purple, that lighter purple too, um, with the gold trim on the numbers and stuff. And then the pants, it, it just, it looks great. So that was made me fall in love with it big time. Now, um, I do not know how this or if it will impact the black jerseys at all. Um, because the black jerseys are obviously some of Baltimore Ravens alternate jerseys too. And hopefully they could just add them all into the mix and just have them on a nice little rotation. Now they did say with these jerseys, they will only wear them one time this year, one time. And you know, it's going to be doing regular season because NFL don't, they don't really mess around about the jerseys come playoff time, but let's worry about the regular season first. So we will see them for which game will it be? No clue. Uh, but how do y'all feel about those new helmets in the jersey combination? Do y'all like it? Because I've heard opinions going both ways. I've heard some people that love it, some people that really like it, and some people that's like, oh, man, that's just garbage. But how do y'all feel about the new jersey combination? And something else I got to get y'all thoughts on are the Baltimore Ravens. Like, we already watch The Wire. We see The Wire that comes through on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. on Baltimore Ravens' YouTube channel. Shout out to them, by the way. But um, what if we got another point of view not only on the Baltimore Ravens, but on the Steelers, on the Browns, and on the Bengals, because that's exactly what we're going to get. Uh, let's read the tweet from the Baltimore Ravens about this. It said, for the first time since its debut, so Ravens started the show. They the ones that started, that, that brought this through to the NFL. But for the first time since its debut, we're coming to Hard Knocks. Hard Knocks goes behind the scenes of an entire NFL division for the first time ever. So Ravens are making history history because hard knocks in season uh, with the afc north premieres december 3rd on max so this is going to cover all four afc north teams they made the right decision with that because they were like you know what which division are we going to go to ah let's go to the best one in football not the most popular one but the best division 
in the NFL. Hey, numbers don't lie, baby. It's true. Um, so this should be really, really nice. One thing I appreciate about it, it's like something from the wire that I appreciate. Um, we see like on, on Sundays when the Ravens play, really, really any team play, but with the, when the Ravens play, we see the final product of all the work that has been put in to get to that point. And hopefully when they get to that point on Sundays and whenever they play, they can execute well. The performance is great. But we don't see all the behind the scenes stuff. We don't see all the practices. We don't, we don't see all the team meetings. We don't see all the workouts in that. So now with something like a hard knocks, especially in season hard knocks, it'll allow us to see more behind the scenes of what's going on in the middle of the season. Of course, they're not going to show us every single thing, but we'll get a, a different point of view. And, and that, in my opinion, it really makes you appreciate whatever the final product is on whatever it is that you're watching, whether it's the behind the scenes and something like this with the, the, the whole AFC North, or if it's like you watching behind the scenes or the making of a movie or something like that. You always appreciate all the work that goes into it because you love the final product, but then when you see Everything that it took to get there, you're like, oh, man, that's 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 really cool. And, and it takes a lot. Um, and then Jonas Schaefer said this. He said the Ravens will be featured on HBO's Hard Knocks in season with the AFC North, which debuts on December 3rd and will premiere on sub subsequent Tuesdays through the end of the season. So get your lineups ready. Get your schedules ready. Have them cleared out on Tuesday because we watch your Hard Knocks with the AFC North and he says the show will document the battle for the AFC North crown during the final six weeks of the NFL season. So hopefully Baltimore Ravens, they got everything wrapped up uh, with the AFC North at that time. Now, um, we talked about how the Ravens, they, they got to get there first. And we talked about a lot of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes in order to, for them to get to that final product, which is when they play on Sundays. Now, training camp. When is training camp starting? When does everybody have to officially report? Because, again, it's right around the corner. Well, uh, the 2024 training camp reporting dates and locations for the Baltimore Ravens. Of course, they got to show up to the Under Armour Performance Center uh, in Owens Mills. But for the rookies, they got to be there on July 13th. So that's less than a month away. We right there, baby. And then the veterans got to show up a week later on July 13th. 20th and again training camp of course is mandatory you have to be there it's not optional it's not like some of OTAs and no no this is a requirement because this is it before regular season time baby this is it of course you got you got training camp and then you got some preseason and whatnot and then ain't no turning back after that so we getting there y'all like I, I know it's been like a sort of up and down kind of slow kind of not slow uh off season but we like we so close man we like a month away so it'll be here literally before you know it now with training camp it comes a lot of battles one of the people that will be battling not even for a roster spot because he got his roster spot this year but it's ronnie stanley he could be battling for just an opportunity with a team next year whether it's with the baltimore ravens or it ends up being somebody else but my guy Jarvo, he had an interesting question on ronnie stanley he said if ronnie stanley plays great for the baltimore ravens this year and stays healthy ooh, that would be a combination that we would love he said do you see us resigning him on a cheap deal no <laughs> like think about it ronnie stanley is already crazy expensive now He's a left tackle. Left tackles get paid a lot of money. So if he does both of those things, like those are two things that make his price go up. That like playing great and staying healthy, that will make anybody's price skyrocket. You ain't getting nobody for cheap if they play great and stay healthy. So cheap out the window. But I, I, I do think that um, while there's a small chance that the Ravens could keep, I, I think both parties will just move on after this year. I think both parties will go their separate ways. Not on no beef stuff or nothing like that. No Kendrick versus Drake. Nothing, nothing like that. I think it'll be peaceful. But um, I, I think Ronnie Stanley, this will officially really be his last season uh, with the Baltimore Ravens. I don't think either one of them are turning back. Uh, and he also said, you always preach your best ability is what? Availability. So with that being said, uh, we are paying a certain corner top dollars, but he hasn't been available for us as of late. And if I'm not mistaken, he isn't available during OTAs and probably training camp. Do you see us cutting or trading him after this upcoming season if he keeps being unavailable? Now, hey, you ain't say no names. You ain't say who you were talking about, but I got to assume that you're talking about 
our guy Marlon Humphrey. And you actually uh, allowed us a perfect segue into Jeff Zrebik's article that he posted on The Athletic. And Jeff Zrebik mentioned some players that through minicamp whose stock are up and some players whose stock is unfortunately down right now. And we'll start off with the, the sort of bad news on that first, whose stock is down right now. One of the players that Jeff Zrebik mentioned was none other than Marlon Humphrey. He said his stock is down right now, and let's see why. He said an eight-year, Marlon Humphrey, an eight-year veteran and three-time Pro Bowl, uh, missing most of OTAs in minicamp isn't a big deal. As long as he doesn't have a significant injury. Harbaugh says that Humphrey has been sidelined with nagging things and should be ready for training camp. Still, not seeing Marlon Humphrey on the field much this offseason conjures up bad memories from last season when the cornerback was limited to 10 games and wasn't healthy for several of those. He missed five games in 2021 as well. Now, here goes the part where Jarvo's question ties in. I mean, it already ties in because he talked about a missing time, but here's what Jeff Zrebik said. He said, this is a big season for Humphrey, given his rising cap number. The last thing he or the Baltimore Ravens need are questions about his health and durability. So, yeah, so look like Jeff Zrebik had your same question that you had about Marlon Humphrey uh, himself. But um, with Marlon Humphrey, yeah, it's, it's a big season for him for sure. It's a big season for him for sure. I remember there was an article uh, months ago like a little before free agency started on the possibility of cutting, releasing uh, a Marlon Humphrey. Talked about the dead money, talked about the, the salary cap relief that the Baltimore Ravens could get. And I was like, oh, okay, that's they they could actually have done it and gotten away with it. But you, you just hope for Marlon Humphrey to have a healthy season. You hope that this year he's good to go. There ain't no setbacks. And it is scary. It, ha it has been scary to think about that. Like, man, Marlon Humphrey... He's been missing his time, and Harbaugh said this with nagging things, and hopefully that's just Harbaugh overblowing something. But at the same time, Marlon Humphrey, he was out there a little bit, but then for a lot of it, he just was not there. Um, so it's one of those things where we just got to wait it out, see how it goes in training camp, and then just go from there. Because Marlon Humphrey, like, he's somebody that you want available. He does make the Baltimore Ravens better, but at the same time, what's scary about it, Baltimore Ravens last year, a lot of games, they ain't had Marlon Humphrey. And they did just fine. Like, they didn't have him in the Texans, in a playoff game. They didn't have him in either Texans game, as a matter of fact. They didn't have him in either one because week one, he missed the first four weeks of the season. Uh, then he missed that, that Texans playoff game. So they didn't have him in either one. They didn't have him the first week against the Bengals. Um, they, I don't think he played versus the Chargers either. And there was another game that he missed. But the Ravens did their thing without him. Now, not to say that he's, a, he's not a bad player at all. But when you see, in my opinion, when you see what life is like without somebody and you do just fine, I think that can be scary for that player. Or it can just be something that's, that's an eye-opener for, like in football, it can be eye-opener for the team. Like, all right, we know what life is like without you, and we got by without you. So if push comes to shove, then, mm. So we'll see what happens after the season. I mean, they did draft Nate Wiggins, too, in the first round, like, so the, the signs are there that they're going to move on eventually. Um, but it just, to me, it's just a, a matter of when. Not if, but when. Obviously, it's not going to happen this season. Um, but next season, it's going to be a significant question, especially depending on how Marlon Humphrey does this year. If Marlon Humphrey can go out there and play great, play phenomenally, do his thing, it'll still be questions about if they keep him or not because then you got Brandon Stevens. A lot depends on how Brandon Stevens plays, too, because Brandon Stevens could be out there a lot. Like, you, you got a lot of options. Raven got some options right now in the secondary. So it's going to be a lot to watch for this year. It's going to be fun to watch it, but it's going to be a lot to watch for. So we'll see how that goes. But that's a great question from uh, my guy, Java, on something to think about. Now, um, continuing with some people that Jeff Zrebik brought up. Uh, whose stock are down right now for uh, going into training camp. Adisa Isaac, the Ravens' third-round pick, and he just talked about how he tweaked his hamstring in rookie minicamp and just he wasn't able to be out there for OTAs. So him being a rookie and not being able to be out there is just it's not a good start at all, especially when he could have an opportunity to get some significant snaps at the outside linebacker as a pass rusher. So that's not good. Ardarius Washington, he mentioned him as his stock being down as well. He talked about how with Ardarius Washington, his, his play has been fine in practice and minicamp and stuff, but it's just the fact that it's a lot of veterans out there, a lot of veteran safeties that are out there that Ravens could possibly pick up, and one of them, whoever they picked up, could take his place. And I think we all still expect them to pick up a veteran safety real soon too because training camp is right here. So 
that could negatively, obviously negatively impact Audarius Washington because he obviously would want to fight for that starting spot, that third safety spot. But if Ravens go with a veteran, then that could impact him in a negative way. Then he also mentioned Pepe Williams. He said with Pepe Williams, um, he had a really nice mini camp and is healthy again, but he talked about how when you look at Baltimore Ravens' depth at the cornerback position, then it doesn't look the best right now for Pepe Williams. And then one more person whose stock he said is down is Ben Cleveland. He said with Ben Cleveland, uh, we would think like this would be a big opportunity for him, but he was not really out there with the starters much during OTAs and minicamp and whatnot. So it's not really looking good. Obviously, training camp a lot could change, but his stock is down as of right now. Now, let's talk about the positive. Whose stock is up? Who's looking good right now for the Baltimore Ravens? Uh, and he started with Malik Cunningham. So he said he's continued just to, to make plays at wide receiver, and he has not looked out of place. So that's good to hear. Uh, also, Isaiah Likely, same thing. He has continued not to look out of place. I mean, he never looked out of place, but he's been making plays as that number two tight end. And we know Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely, like, yeah. But it's good to hear that he's doing a great job. But Trent Simpson, he, he said there's been zero talk in recent weeks of a starting weak side linebacker competition. That's because Trent Simpson has looked the part. So he's basically saying Trent Simpson locking it down. The Baltimore Ravens said earlier this year, we're not going to just hand him the position, but Jen Simpson said, I don't care, I'm taking it. So it's, it's all here for the taking. So that should be real fun to see with him and Roquan Smith, man in the middle. Um, he also mentioned Ronnie Stanley. Ronnie Stanley as somebody who's been looking good, especially a healthy Ronnie Stanley. And we'll see how things go with him. Because, again, like my guy Jarvo mentioned, could he stay a Baltimore Raven after this year? Could he, could he go else? We'll see. But if he can put on just a great performance this year, it'll just be great for him just personally, uh, especially after everything that he's dealt with these past, like, what, four years? Because there's been a lot of injuries. Um, so if he can just do a great job this year as Ravens starting left tackle and stay healthy, stay on that field, he'll be in real, real good shape. Uh, he also talked about Andrew Voorhees, how he's been doing this thing, and he looks to be the starter at left guard. Uh, he's the favorite to be the starter at left guard right now. Again, training camp is right around the corner, so we'll see. He also talked about how Tylen Wallace has been doing this thing. Uh, but somebody else who he mentioned, was a, which was a surprise, was Trey Swilling. And I'm not familiar with his game, but Jeff Sreebick said that he was on the practice squad last year, but he's been making plays at safety, especially since Marcus Williams wasn't out there the majority of OTAs and, and Kyle Hamilton. He hasn't been out there because of the elbow procedure that he had. He said Trey Swilling, been, he's been around that ball, man. So, hey, Trey Swilling, or Darius Washington, both making plays at safety. I, I still do think the Baltimore Ravens, they're going to end up signing somebody, signing a veteran. Um, but, hey, only time will truly tell now team keep it clean again make sure you subscribe to the channel turn your notifications on so you do not miss not a single video not a single update not a single thing and leave a like on the video because it helps out the channel so 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 much i love y'all i appreciate y'all hope everything is going real real good for y'all we out